And so this first part, Roger's gonna do a split step and he's gonna do a unit turn. And this unit turn starts to get him into this position. So right around here, the racket's now gonna drop into that position where the racket can now have that runway to come around. Notice how Roger has his coil. And what I mean by coil, if you notice his hips are almost facing the camera, but his shoulders are actually facing further back. There's some separation between his uh, core mid area. And so what this does is it creates a lot of tension that he can now use to pull the racket. So um, maybe a phrase I want you to maybe think about as you start looking at your other videos, the difference between kind of almost pushing the ball mm -hmm. and pulling the ball, but, but using your entire body. All I'm gonna have you do, and we'll use this line in a second as guide, is to split and turn. And so I want you to feel the separation just in this part right here. So it'll look like this, split, turn, and then you can really hopefully see my hips are facing this way and my shoulders are facing that way. In a nutshell, what Kevin's trying to guide our student towards doing is coiling and uncoiling the body more actively. Rick's a strong guy, and so he can get away to a certain extent with just using his arm. He can make a shot that way, but where he has a huge opportunity is actually using his body to coil, turn, and then uncoil. And so a tool that we'll frequently use to get something to feel what that should be like is using a medicine ball. This one's not super heavy, it's just six pounds, but the motion of feeling like you're going to turn back and then throw or release the ball does a really good job of mimicking what a solid ground stroke mechanic should be with the, the hips and the, the core. <laughs> Everything you were just doing, you're gonna do two shadows and you're gonna get into this position. Megan's gonna drop you a ball and you're gonna do that. Not much challenge yet, but we are introducing the ball and so if there's going to be a big problem, usually we'll see it right away, just with the very first ball drop. It's like, wow, like he's really struggling managing all this and hitting the ball at the same time. So, uh, so far, really good. Again, looking at the back knee, how it's initiating. So I'm really happy with this right now. The next element is starting to help you with the timing of now having the ball come towards you. Okay. Good. Fake. Nice. So we just saw our, our very first reversion, just, just a little bit. Um, and it came after working on timing. We did some, some fake tosses where he wasn't hitting the ball, just working on doing the same movement and timing the fake toss, but not actually trying to hit the ball. And he breezed through all that, no problem. As soon as he started hitting the ball, he lost a bunch of his coil and totally normal. But uh, really positive is the first time that he's gone back a little bit towards his old habit. And it's always hitting the ball. Hitting the ball is always the trigger that pulls people back towards their old habit. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how he manages now that he knows he's going back, how well he's able to stick with the thing we're trying to get him to learn. In your shadow, See how you're, you're almost, you're over uh, rotating. And part of that, I feel like, is that you're trying to, in the process of like, get the coil, you're turning your body more this way okay. instead of creating the separation. Okay. And so, as you're starting to step, you can say, see where your front foot's uh, literally stepping back yeah. to, I think, for you, create more coil. Yeah, yeah instead of being able, and so what happens is when you step back like that, now you actually lock your hip up. Your hip's not gonna be able to move because, remember how we were talking about this versus this. So it's really going back to those first parts of making sure, if you hold this for yeah. one second, making sure that here, this initiation is, and that's why we started here, is from here versus you're turning and then initiating here. There's just different nuances and details that student is trying to manage all of and at this point we need to just do a really good job of getting him on a very narrow kind of singular focus so that we've picked the, the most important thing which is just his loaded coiled starting position and then 
just if we get that and then just have them be calm and just swing through and relax, then that's that's a big success. Without the other auxiliary, like okay, having the, the hip initiate and having the angle with the foot, you know, be right and all those other things, they can come later. But we're going to be very, very diligent at this point now, just focusing on the coil, and that's it. Nice, Rick. Nice. Oh, nice. All right, so good session overall. Uh, definitely, definitely, you know, some some challenge, like right kind of right in the middle. And honestly, I think going looking back, I think we probably should have managed the number of individual elements a, a little bit better. But at, at least we brought everything back together again and found kind of our primary element. And we're being really clear with him at this point that when he goes home, it, it's just the initial coil. There's a lot of other parts that are connected to that and are important as far as timing of when it happened, but any more than just the coil and he, he was getting overwhelmed and so he's, he's got to be very vigilant about managing the, the number of elements that he's focusing on at once. Good job. Yep, thank you. Yeah. Nice work. Thank you. Yeah, nice job.